know your IS code provisions, a short lecture series on tall building code, that is IS 16700-2017. So in this short lecture, I will explain about clause number 5.2, that is plan. So for essentials of earthquake resistant design are configuration, stiffness, strength, and ductility. So this plan comes under first, first item, that is configuration. So uh, plan configuration and elevation configuration. Okay. So in that plan, so what are the core provisions uh, for plan configuration? So let us look into that. So let me share my screen. Yeah, clause number 5.2, that is plan. So what code says is plan geometry. The plan shall preferably be rectangular, including square, or elliptical, including circle. So typically, it looks like this. So this is a three-dimensional uh, figure. So rectangular, and also it can be also uh, square. And this is a three-dimensional uh, figure of elliptical. Okay, it can also be depending on the uh, major axis, minor axis, if they are equal, that becomes circle. So rectangular or circle, so uh, rectangular or elliptical. Now in buildings with said plan geometries, structural members participate efficiently in resisting lateral loads without causing additional effects arising out of re-entrant corners and others. So there are some complications. Say this rectangular plan and uh, elliptical plan is there. So all the uh, frame members and frames will be aligned into orthogonal directions, orthogonal direction. Now, if say uh, load path, there will be proper load path. So two or three load paths will be available uh, if it is rectangular or say uh, elliptical also. Now it says that the efficiency, so efficiency of resisting lateral loads without causing uh, like adverse effects out of causing out of say re-entrant corners. So what is a re-entrant corner? So we have discussed this one. Uh, I made a short lecture on this one in uh, re-entrant corners in IS 1893. So let us uh, briefly refer to that and come back to this plan uh, geometry. So re-entrant corner, this is as per 1893. So what? Uh, 1893 defines as reentrant corner. So a building is said to have a reentrant corner in, it, in any plan direction when its structural configuration in plan has a projection of size greater than 15% of its overall plan dimension. So something like this. You can see L is a plan dimension and this A is a projection. So A by L ratio, if it is more than 15%, then structure is said to have re-entrant corner. So what will happen to re-entrant corner? So re-entrant corner, if it is there, then the projected portions will behave in a flexible manner and the central portion behaves in a rigid manner. So for example, if the vibration is in this direction, then this and this will behave in a flexible manner. And if the vibration is in this x-axis, then the other projected portions will behave in a uh, more flexible manner. So what are the safeguards which code has given against that? So first, first and foremost thing is earthquake performance of such a uh, structure with re-entrant corner will be uh, low. That means what stress concentration takes place at these junctions, wherever uh, these two uh, frames meet or these two uh, structural elements meet. So what code says is, in 1890s, that is, in a building with re-entrant corners, so it, it is suggesting that three-dimensional dynamic uh, analysis with flexible floor diaphragm shall be adopted to capture the concentration of forces generated in the re-entrant corners, especially in the floor diaphragm and special elements adjoining the re-entrant corner. So if you look at the uh, clause carefully, what code is suggesting is, first do the 3D analysis. Okay, and also by assuming that it is flexible floor uh, diaphragm. So what happens is you do the rigid floor diaphragm analysis, 
and also flexible flow diaphragm analysis and take the uh, worst uh, case. So whichever case is giving a maximum effect, that case need to be considered. That's what is the recommendation. So when it comes to tall buildings also, so uh, like tall building is putting more restriction actually. Tall building is saying that, tall building code is saying that it should be preferably rectangular or elliptical. So that means what? It is discouraging uh, uh, like uh, re-entrant corners in the uh, plan geometry of the structure. So that's what uh, it is. Then coming to plan aspect ratio. This is uh, in tall building code that is IS 16700 plan aspect ratio. So what code says is the maximum plan aspect ratio that is L1 divided by B1 of the overall building shall not exceed 5. So something like this, you can see. This is the plan of the building. L is the length, B is the another dimension, width. So L by B, or you can say L1 by B1 should not exceed five. Now what happens if it exceeds five? So if it exceeds five, uh, like building will go under flexible floor diaphragm, flexible floor diaphragm. So flexible floor diaphragm comes, with, uh, comes uh, because of several reasons. One is this one, and also if there are openings in the building, so that we'll discuss in another short lecture. So to avoid uh, flexible floor diaphragm, it is expected that building behaves in a rigid floor diaphragm manner. So aspect ratio is uh, restricted. So if it is aspect ratio is very high, what happens is uh, the displacement demand in different, different uh, lateral load resisting elements will be different. And uh, the force which is fed to these elements also will be different. So code is uh, like uh, recommending that uh, the floor diaphragm should be, uh, the aspect ratio of floor, uh, floor should be less than uh, five. And now in, in case of L-shaped building, if building is uh, having L-shape, then what it says is, L1, B1 shall refer to respective lengths and width of each leg of the building. So that means same should be maintained. Okay. So this is one leg, this is another leg. So L1, B1, here also it should be uh, like uh, L1 by B1 less than 5. And in this direction also, L2 by B2 also, it should be less than 5. Another, another uh, leg, L2 by B2 should be less than 5. So here again, uh, like in L shape kind of building, dynamic analysis is uh, required. This, uh, this is recommended, dynamic analysis is recommended because earthquake performance will be poor. And also aspect ratio is uh, suggested that it should be less than, should, shall not exceed five. So the intention of this short lecture is to help students and practicing engineers, particularly budding practicing engineers to understand IS code provisions in a better manner. Following references have been used in the preparation of these slides. Thank you.